Hi everyone, this is Frankie. We're going to be looking at reselect today. So what reselect is, is it's a tool for optimizing Redux applications, preventing needless renders, and improving performance of combining different pieces of state. So here we have the reselect library on GitHub, and it has quite a readme. We're not going to cover everything in this video, but we'll get all the important stuff. So then we have our React app over here. Let's hop into the code and see what's going on. We have our main app. It renders a posts container, a counter container, and two posts by ID containers. We have some initial data here, which then goes through these reducers. Count reducer is the only one that updates more than once in our example app. It just increments every 500 milliseconds. So here's our initial state for the, for the application. We have users by ID, so it's a mapping of user IDs to user objects. We have a user listing, which is a list of user IDs. We have a posts by ID, which uh, maps post IDs to post objects, and a post listing, which lists the post IDs. And finally, our counter. This is just the initial state. It starts at one. So what's going on right now is this counter is incrementing. And you can see down in the console here that posts is rendering every time. But posts doesn't use the counter state, it uses the posts and user states. So why is it updating? Well, to see that, we'll have to look over at our posts component. In our map state to props, where we transform the state of the store into props for the component, we're using a few pieces of state here. Redux calls this function every time there's a state update in the store. So then what we're doing is we're taking this listing and we're transforming it with an array.map function to produce an array of post objects with the user data attached to them. Now the problem here is that listing.map returns a new object every time, a new array. So we return an object to Redux with the key posts and the value of a new array. Redux shallowly compares that to the previous state and says, this is a different array, even though it contains the exact same data. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're returning the same reference to an array if the data hasn't actually changed. And if it has actually changed, we want to return a new reference to a new array. So this is where reselect comes in. It helps us cache our computations so that we can preserve reference equality in our map state to props functions. So first we're going to need to import reselect. We create a function. We'll call it get listing. So then we need to pass this a list of functions. So our first function, sort of like what we're doing here, is we take the post by ID. So a function from state to post.id. And then we have another function that maps state to users by ID. And then finally our post listing. Now the last function that you pass to reselect receives the values of each of these selectors. So we have posts, users, listing. And then here we need to return a new state based on these values. So we can just copy and paste our listing.map from up here and pass that as the return value. Now we have to actually use get listing. So we're going to come down, remove all of this stuff from our maps, map state to props, and return posts is equal to get listing state. Now if we come back over to our application, it refreshes, and we see posts just rendered twice. And our counter continues incrementing. So what's happening here is every time map state to props is called, we call get listing, and then reselect starts calling these selector functions. So it calls the first one, and then stores the result, calls the second one, stores the result, calls the third one, stores the result, 
It looks and sees if any of these have changed since the last time the selector was called. In this case, none of them are ever changing. So now, when we come down here, this function isn't even called again. That means this very slightly expensive map function doesn't run whenever other state changes, and it just returns the previous result of this function here. So that means that posts will always have the same reference value unless any of these three values have changed. Now let's focus on a different problem. We have these components down here that show the posts for each user. So we have users 1's posts and user 2's posts. Now currently we're just showing users 1 post because we have a problem. We have our selector here, but the issue is that we don't have any way to see which user we're supposed to be looking at. If we go back to our index.js, you see we have posts by user and we're passing it a user ID as a prop. And then here we're passing it a different user ID. The problem is that our selector only receives the store state. So we have to use a special technique that creates a selector per component instance, and then we can pass it props. It'll select based on these props also, and cache based on the return value of those props. So in order to do this, we need to first change our map state to props. Now map state to props has a special form where it's a function that returns a function. The first function takes no arguments. The next function that we're returning from inside this function takes the arguments state and own props. And then in here, we'll return the state. Now we do need to actually turn this into a statement function instead of a lambda-like function. So we're going to return this function here. Now what we need to do here is create a selector that can actually use the props that we pass it. So in order to do that, we're going to need to make get posts into a function called make get posts. And then we're going to come down here and create our first selector, which is going to take the state but ignore it, and then take the props object and return props.user, which is the user that we're passing right here. So now we're going to call make get posts and store that in a variable called get posts. Then here we're going to call get posts, pass it state, and own props. Now we could also be using the props in any of these selectors here by just adding a second argu argument. You can use multiple of the props or you can use none of them. And then if we come down here, we can say post.id is equal to user ID. Now, if we refresh the page, we get Tom Scott and Dick Wolf as our users, and it shows their posts. We have one and four here and two and five here. And if we look at our console.log for posts by a user rendering, it renders twice and that's it. And our counter continues to increment and none of our other components are needlessly updating. This is really the power of reselect. It's a great tool, and it just makes so much difference in the performance of your average React application with a large state tree and lots of updates happening at various points in time. So we'll see you in the ne next video. Thanks for watching.